بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دا نیم آف اللہ دا موسٹ بینفیشنٹ اینڈ مرسیفل دیئر سٹوڈنٹ السلام علیکم مائی نیم اس ڈاکٹر آن افرد محمود اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر بیک ویڈ آور لاؤس لیکچر آف چپٹر نمبر تری ویچ اس آباؤٹ سنگل کرسٹل ایکس ری ڈائی فریکشن ٹیکنیکس this lecture is 3.10 and in this lecture we will finish our third technique that is about electron diffraction technique in which we were studying about the scanning electron microscopy this uh, chapter comes under the main course of x-ray diffraction technique with the course code M5134. Dear student, uh, we were discussing about our last technique, scanning electron microscopy. And uh, this technique when used for amorphous material, we know that amorphous material do not consist of atoms arranged in ordered lattices. But in uh, random sites amorphous material are completely disordered the electron diffraction pattern will consist of fuzzy rings of light on the fluorescent screen the diameter of these rings of light are related to the average nearest neighbor distance in the material in short we can say that diffraction pattern gave crystallographic information about a material from site specific small volume unlike xrd which is a bulk analysis technique we can determine if the material is amorphous crystalline or polycrystalline quickly and effectively lattice parameters information unit cell detail and any periodicity present in the sample arising from structural transformation or ordering processes can be seen super lattice structure give information about the long range makeup of a material here is a three figure shown as a b c a is the amorphous material and b is the crystalline material and c is a polycrystalline material so there are different kind of diffraction pattern shown by the scanning electron microscopy when we have different kind of material then different kind of uh, diffraction patterns are recorded so types of the electron diffraction pattern one is the ring pattern from comes from polycrystalline specimen and its major uses are identification of the phases analysis of the texture and the determination of the camera constant l lambda second pattern is spot pattern from single crystal region of the specimen and its major uses are the foil orientation can be determined identification of the phases the orientation relationship between structure can be determined here are some advantages of uh, electron diffraction diffraction beam has high intensity it can handle nano size crystals and the material needed is in a small amount and the cell symmetry and the cell parameters can be easily extracted from electron diffraction pattern 
in TEM and SEM TEM class mission electron microscopy and SEM scanning electron microscopy the particles are individually examined and particle shape can be measured and there are some disadvantages of electron diffraction these are as this technique is more expensive this is more time consuming and it must be done in high vacuum and only transmission electron microscopes are capable of doing this sort of microscopy the TEMs are extremely expensive samples that are prepared for electron diffraction must be made extremely thin and samples for the materials such as emulsion are difficult to prepare low throughput not for routine use here are some differences between x-ray electron and neutron diffraction in x-ray diffraction wavelength needed for crystalline diffraction wavelength needed for crystal diffraction of the order wavelength is equal to one angstrom of which is same as size as an atom and the x-ray have energy equal to 10.4 electron volt 10 raised to power 4 electron volt whereas the electron diffraction in which the wavelength needed for the crystal diffraction of the order of lambda that is equal to one angstrom and the electron have the energy of nearly equal to 40 electron volt while as neutron diffraction the wavelength needed is almost twice of the wavelength in x-rays and electron diffraction that is the wavelength needed for crystal diffraction of the order of lambda equal to 2 angstrom and the neutron have the energy nearly equal to 0.08 electron volt some other uh, differences between the x-rays and electron microscopy and neutron microscopy are x-rays is the cheapest the most convenient and widely used method while electron beam can easily produce by the cathode tube and easily available while neutron source in the world are limited so neutron diffraction is very special tool and very expensive x-rays interact with the particle distribution with the special distribution of the valence electrons while in case of electron diffractions electrons are the charged particles and interact with the matter through the columbic forces this means that the incident electron feel the influence of the both positively charged atomic nuclei while in case of neutron diffraction technique neutrons are scattered by the atomic nuclei through the strong nuclear forces in addition the magnetic moment of the neutron is non-zero and they have therefore also scattered by magnetic field here are some applications the application of the electron diffraction include 
क्रिस्टल ओरिएंटेशन फेज आइडेंटिफिकेशन माइक्रोस्ट्रक्चर डिटर्मिनेशन टेक्सचर डिटर्मिनेशन एंड स्टेन डिटर्मिनेशन स्ट्रक्चर डिटर्मिनेशन इज आल्सो वन ऑफ इट्स एप्लीकेशन एंड व्हेन वी विल डिस्कस इट्स एप्लीकेशन इन द फील्ड ऑफ बायोलॉजी electron diffraction provides valuable information for the evaluation of specimen damage that can occur either during the specimen preparation or while in the electron beam dark field electron microscopy can be used both to enhance the image contrast and also to provide the high highly restricted and highly specific information about the object so in biology if we use electron diffraction beam that provide valuable information for evaluating specimen but it can damage the specimen either during the specimen preparation or during the examination through electron beam for this dark field electron microscopy is used to enhance the image contrast to provide highly restricted and highly specific information about the object in pharmaceutical industry electron diffraction has been recently used in the pharmaceutical industry to study the polymorphism in the crystalline drug substances in field of mineralogy electron diffraction combined with electron microscopy is used to study the mineralogical problems and in the structure characterization its application comes as electron diffraction combined with the bright and dark field observation of the sample provide an efficient way to determine the crystal structure related to the specific morphology where LED is one of the most informative technique for determining the arrangement of atoms close to the surface LED is used in chemical analysis and LED pattern are used to access the defect density here are some limitations of uh, electron microscopy electron diffraction has following limitations number 1 is the that the sample to be studied must be electron transparent meaning the sample thickness must be of the order of 100 nanometer or less and this technique is not applicable to samples which are vulnerable to radiation damage caused by the incident electrons it is also not applicable for the study of magnetic materials because of the fact that electrons are deflected in magnetic field by the lorentz force dear student as we know that we have started this uh, single crystal x-ray diffraction technique from the x-ray sources and we know that x-rays were discovered by the scientist ranjan and was awarded nobel prize in physics for the discovery of x rays in 1901 and x ray have a unique ability to penetrate and good 
get diffracted within the interatomic layer of the crystals. So when we use X-rays as a source and it incident on the sample, these incident rays are then scattered by the uh, sample and recorded on the film. And uh, if these scattered waves superimpose, then the waves are in the phase and the interference is constructive. And if out of phase, then destructive interference occur. Though diffraction, according to Bragg's equation, have been visualized as a reflection from a set of planes and with interplanar spacing D, diffraction should not be confused with the reflection. Because in reflection, it is a surface phenomena, while diffraction is a bulk phenomena. Reflection take place at any angle, while diffraction occurs only at Bragg's angle. And reflection is a 100% intensity get reflected. While in diffraction, small fraction, fraction is diffracted. Generally used X-ray source in X-ray diffraction technique. And depending on the type of sample, three techniques used in XRD laboratories. And one is powder XRD analysis, second is thin film XRD analysis, and third is single crystal XRD analysis. In powder XRD analysis, many small crystallities are randomly oriented. And the diffraction condition is met at spheres in 3D reciprocal space isotropic. It measures in one direction or point or strip detectors are used. Second is thin film XRD analysis. It uses grazing incidence to reduce substrate diffraction. And in case of single crystal XRD analysis, only large crystallite are used. Diffraction condition is met at point in 3D reciprocal space. Less amount needed for sample analysis that is 1 to 10 milligram versus 500 to 5000 milligram in other techniques. It is used for the appropriate analysis of large molecule and unit cells. Requirement of hydrogen is okay, generally does not need to be deteriorated. Less absorption occur and Fourier coefficient are more accurate. And this technique based on the integrating well resolved peaks. Uniquely characterized non standard scattering super lattice and satellite peaks, common commensurate. commensurate and in commensurate diffuse commensurate and incommensurate diffuse scattering rods planes the design challenge for single crystal diffractometers is that how to determine the position and intensity of these diffraction spots? Louis versus single crystal diffraction. In Louis' method, stationary sample 
bathed with the white radiation that is many wavelength but in case of single crystal diffraction monochromatic radiation hit a sample and it is rotated and manipulated to bring different planes into diffracting condition sample is illuminated with monochromatic radiation and the sample axis phi and the goniometer axis omega and 2 theta are rotated to capture diffraction spots from at least one hemisphere easier to index this technique is easier to index and solve the crystal structure because it diffraction peak is uniquely resolved in single crystal x-ray diffraction it is x-ray diffraction included two physical processes number 1 is scattering of x-rays by matter number 2 is interference of those scattered x-rays to produce a diffraction pattern it is based on simple maximum ordered substrate yield ordered diffraction pattern and disordered substrate yield disordered diffraction pattern the result of the single crystal x-ray diffraction is highly ordered diffraction pattern due to the substrate highly ordered three dimensional crystal structure which make the interpretation of the diffraction pattern move uh, diffraction pattern more meaningful in this cases uh, the theoretical background of the single crystal x-ray technique there are some points to remember these points are crystal with more electrons crystals with will more a uh, crystal with more electron will more strongly scatter by x rays crystal with more electron will more strongly scatter the x rays and the effectiveness of the scattering of x rays is called scattering factor from our uh, form form factor which is the symbol f not the scattering factor depend on the number of electron around the atom the bragg angle and the wavelength of the x rays and the scattering power decreases as the bragg angle increases and the resultant of the wave scattered by all atom in unit cell in the direction of hkl reflection is called structural factor which is denoted by f h k l and another point to remember is that that the structural factor depend on the scattering factor as well as the position of each atom for atom in the unit cell the h k l factor is uh and the scattering factors and its fractional coordinates are calculated this series in sin theta and cos theta expression is called fourier series a single crystal x-ray diffraction pattern can be particularly divided into the geometry of the pattern and the intensities of the diffraction beam geometry of the pattern include the lattice parameters and the crystal orientation and it reflect the translational periodicity of the lattice structure intensities of the diffracted beam include displacement parameters site occupancy factor atoms types and position and the connection between the lattice and the diffraction pattern is reciprocal one crystal with more compact lattice result in a wide diffraction pattern while large lattice structure give compact diffraction pattern
so dear student in this single crystal x-ray diffraction technique we can use different kind of sources that can analyze the single crystal or the crystal in the bulk form or the crystal in the powder state in which we use different kind of sources like x-rays we can also use some neutrons and we can also use the electron as a source that incident on the crystal or the substrate or the sample taken in the machine and all these sources are diffracted after the incident on the sample and then these and they are diffracted pattern in the form of spots or rings is uh, observed by the detector and the detectors after observing all the information by the scattered beams and these beams are of x-rays neutron or electrons and then the detector is also provided with some different kind of uh, softwares that solve all the uh, related uh, information from the scattered beams and their angles and these software are used to solve the structure of the uh, crystal lattice and the structure of the single crystal so this is all about the single crystal x-ray diffraction technique that we have studied and we have covered it in almost 10 lectures of single crystal x-ray diffraction uh, this is our uh, third chapter of the x-ray diffraction technique so now we will come with another topic in the next uh, uh, lecture till then thank you very much